In this video, we're going to look at using salt with watercolor to make some fantastic texture techniques. If you're a beginner, you're gonna love it. If you think you've seen it before, stick around because I've got a few more in-depth techniques and tips that are gonna make it work for you a little bit better and a little bit more consistently every time. Welcome back to my channel. And if we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on my channel, you'll find um, art techniques and business and social media advice for artists. So do consider subscribing. And if you ring the little bell notification, you won't miss anything. So you can get some amazing effects with watercolor, some beautiful crystallizations. And I'm going to point the camera down at my drawing board now and get some paints out and I'll show you how it's done. So the salt I'm going to be using today in the UK, it's called rock salt. It's this big stuff here. It might be called sea salt, something like that. It's the chunky granules of salt. Now you can use ordinary household salt. You can use the fine salt. Anything you sprinkle on your paper and leave to dry will leave some kind of impression. But if you want those real lovely um, texture techniques that you might have seen with salt and watercolor, then the big stuff is the best. So as well as showing you how to do this, I'm also going to put some photographs up of artwork that I've done in the past where I've used salt for a texture technique. So some of you may have seen this done before, but I'm going to show you a couple of ways, a couple of techniques I use to make it even more effective. So I'm going to put some wet paint on the paper. This is ultramarine and we'll have a talk in a minute about which colours this works best with. And I think I'll drop, just for fun, I'll drop a bit of cobalt violet in as well. We'll have a bit of purple in there. You can see how wet that is. And then straight away, I'm going to drop my salt in. And we're just going to sprinkle on like that. Now, in its simplest form, that's all there is to the technique. But I'm going to tell you about a few things that will make it work a little bit better for you. Now you can see already that the salt is causing the pigment to sort of um, disperse away from and also at the same time kind of be attracted to and what this uh, into the salt granules and what this does is it leads to this kind of crystallization effect. Now it's almost impossible with salt to tell exactly what effect you're going to get. Sometimes all that happens is you get little dots. But when it works really well, you get these beautiful, beautiful crystal effects. I'm not going to be able to show it to you immediately. I'll take a photograph of it at the end because it's going to take several hours to dry. But I've got some other examples I can show you and also some examples in paintings that I can show you as well. Now, the success of this technique requires the salt to be applied immediately as soon as the wet paint is on. So make sure you've got everything ready to go before you start. So that's one mistake I see is people put the paint on and then they're faffing around trying to find the salt and it's too late, the paint has dried. So get everything ready to go sprinkle the salt in straight away. And then I'm gonna give you some techniques that will help you to make that effect even, uh, even more dramatic, shall we say. So what I'm gonna do we've already got those colors there, is I'm now gonna get a contrasting color and it doesn't even have to be a color. You can do this with plain water if you want. I'm gonna get some yellow. And with rather wet paint, I'm gonna drip this in without actually disturbing the salt too much. I'm just gonna put it nearby. Now, because that paper is damp in the middle now rather than dry, I'm gonna get some little sort of back runs and things happening. So it's gonna help that salt to make those crystal shapes. So you can see I'm not disturbing it too much, but I'm just dropping that other color in. All you do is leave it to dry and then you very carefully rub it off into a bin. It can, it can stick quite, quite hard, but you can just give it a shove and um, it'll come off. Now I want to talk to you about color mixing because there are certain colors that this will work better for than other colors. Now you want to make sure that you're using granulating colors. So granulating colors are colors that naturally have heavier pigments in. And they're the colors that when you paint them, they appear kind of granular and speckly. You can see it if I don't know if you can see it on the video, but you can see it around here, the colors separating into those granules. And that's because I've used ultramarine, one of the most heavily granulating pigments there is. So imagine this. Imagine if I wanted to use purple with the salt technique. So I've got options here. I could use this. It's permanent blue violet. It's a lovely, bright, 
violet purple color but the problem with this color is that it doesn't granulate it's a staining color so it's transparent no granulation so it's not going to work as effectively so if i want purple i've got that option i can use the ready-made tube of purple that's a transparent staining color or what about i get some ultramarine which i know granulates heavily and i mix some pink in with it both colors don't have to granulate only one color needs to granulate or some of the colors to granulate in order to help this effect along so I want you to think before you use this with a transparent color, could you mix a similar color using granulating colors? So which colors granulate? Earth colors granulate. So colors like yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt umber, some of the um, warm sort of brick reds like Venetian red, they all granulate. Some of the blues granulate, particularly ultramarine, cobalt, and cerulean blue they granulate heavily and some of the yellows granulate so as we said yellow ochre but any of the sort of the cadmium yellows will probably granulate too so rather than waiting for that to dry i'm going to bring in here one of the samples that i use when i'm teaching um, this was from a day course i taught on watercolor techniques and here you can see the effect has worked really well we've got multiple colors we've got textures we've got those lovely crystallizations you can also see the little shapes of the salt crystals where they dried onto the paper. Really important to let it dry long enough. You might think it's dry, but is it actually dry? If you, if you absolutely can, then leave it until the next day. Now, the best places to use this sort of technique would be things that crystallize like ice and snow. You can also use it for things like lichen. It's great for underwater pictures where you want things like coral. Let me know in the comments if there's anywhere that you like to use salt. So three tips for making this work more effectively. One is to use rough paper. Two is to wait until it's semi-dry and then drip some wet paint or clean water in between the salt granules to add to that uneven drying. And three is to use granulating colors. I'll put a list of granulating colors in the description. So do let me know in the comments if you've tried this yourself, if you're going to have a go at it now. Maybe you've got some, uh, some tips of your own for making salt more interesting or for different ways of using salt. So do write it in the comments and other people can have a look too and we can all learn from each other. And if you're ready to take your creativity to the next level, do hit the subscribe button and ring the bell notification. You won't miss anything and I'll see you again in my studio soon.